they looked happy and playful. But when you asked them to draw, they drew these drawings. That was a very powerful way for us to know the true impact of the war on these children. They are victims of war, victims of exile, and they are victims of trauma. And it affects nearly half of the 1.65 million Syrian refugee children currently living in Turkey. Four out of ten of these children suffer from depression. But what exactly is post-traumatic stress disorder? It's a mental health problem that develops after exposure to deadly situations like war, natural disasters, or sexual assault. And it's very different for children. Children tend to miss sequence events when they have PTSD. For example, they'll say that something happened yesterday when it actually didn't, or it happened a month ago. PTSD in children causes psychosomatic illnesses. Think imaginary pain. Another way to detect PTSD in children is they tend to engage in a lot of post-traumatic play, which is basically whenever they get together to play or when even um, uh, with each other or on their own, they uh, play out that very traumatic scene constantly. PTSD can have drastic effects on young minds, like feelings of detachment, emotional numbness, and severe anxiety. They'll have uh, survival skills, they'll be like, oh my god, my sister didn't survive this and I did. Teenagers with PTSD are more likely to act impulsively and with aggression, and this can directly feed into stereotypes often associated with young refugees, such as substance abuse, criminal activity, and violent sexual behavior. Younger children often find it harder to express themselves verbally. They asked children to draw. Um, Drawing help is a, is, is, is a method of communication for children. It's a representation of their response to, their emotional response to a situation. They actually drew uh, lots of blood, lots of tears, lots of people, lots of weapons, which you know, you don't really expect children to uh, draw. So what is Turkey doing about this mental health crisis? Turkey is targeting the very factors that put Syrian refugee children at risk. And the first step is providing free healthcare and free mental health care to these young people. Turkey also provides language courses for Syrian doctors and nurses for them to better adapt to the Turkish healthcare system and to make these benefits more accessible to Syrian refugees. There is also a cash assistance scheme which was established in collaboration with the World Food Program. It provides monthly assistance to over a million refugee families and about 40% of these funds are used to prevent food insecurity and malnutrition, which in turn contributes to the personal and academic development of these young children. Turkey also introduced temporary education centers in refugee camps and to over 350 schools in urban areas. The classes are offered in Arabic by Syrian volunteer teachers who use a curriculum modeled off the Syrian schooling system. Turkish classes are also available and the aim is to encourage more integration. And these efforts seem to be yielding good results. More than a million refugee families are not hungry anymore. They are able to get food on the table. Second is that since 2014, within three years, the number of Syrian refugee children in schools has more than doubled, from 26% in 2014 to more than, more than 60%. That is an achievement. All these efforts may actually be giving Syrian children what they need most, the chance to establish normalcy in their lives by interacting with their peers, a safe space to recover from psychological distress, and a sense of belonging. Research shows that the longer a child stays in a host country, uh, they tend to develop more attachment with it. The longer the child stays, the harder it becomes to leave for them. So not only do they not want to leave, they are also, they're also a big part of Turkey's future.